This is going to be the chattiest, most laid back video I've done in quite some time. I'm essentially winging it because I kind of have an idea of what I want to do over the next few months and the entirety of spring. But I'm feeling a little bit random this year too. The majority of what I'm going to talk about today will get done because I'm very excited about the coming months. I kind of just need to talk through some things and maybe that will help me on my path to superstardom in 2024 on booktube. Oh my god you can so tell I don't script. So hi welcome or welcome back to Gavin reads it all. I want to talk about the next three months, so March, April, May, which constitutes spring. I want to talk about the books I want to read, the videos I want to make, just to kind of give you a little bit of a taste of what you can look forward to on this random ass channel. I'm also working against the clock because I'm using natural lighting, but the sun is going to go down soon. So one huge thing that I'm looking forward to in spring is longer days and being able to film whenever I want to film because it'll be light outside still. As much as I love winter, I really can't wait for it to be over. I just want those longer days. I want more daylight. So let's just get straight into it. And before I do, leave this video a like if you enjoy and subscribe if you haven't already. So firstly, I have some book club books that I need to get to. Some of them, I probably will have already mentioned, but firstly, I still need to get to A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This one is for my Patreon book club for February leading into March. The live show for this isn't until the start of March, so I still have like two weeks before I actually need to read it. This one follows a girl called Effie, who I believe believes in fairy tales, and there is some kind of fairy king, and she finds solace in this book where this mortal girl falls in love with a fairy king and then destroys him. This book is written by an author who I believe dies, and the author's family runs this competition to see who can redesign his house or something. Like, some of these authors have, like, wild imaginations. Like, I don't know how you get from A to B there, but apparently that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited to read it and talk about it with my patrons in a couple of weeks. The March pick for my patrons is a middle grade book and that is The Bookshop of Dreams and Dust by Mindy Thompson. I'm remembering that from the top of my head because I have no idea where my copy is right now. And I think it's about a bookshop that transports you through time through its pages. I think. I, I think it has some kind of World War II aspect to it as well. So my Patreon book club does do adult and YA and then middle grade and then it goes to an Agatha Christie book so we can do a solve along. But I'm also going to add a fourth option and that's going to be like a true crime book. So I'm not 100% sure which true crime book we will pick for April but that's going to be a new kind of book club on my Patreon. I think it's going to be awesome because I've never read a true crime book before. I love doing true crime and wine nights with my patrons like every other Sunday but I've never read a true crime book and as a booktube channel I feel like that's just absolutely disgusting to me. So I want to correct that and we're going to read our first true crime book very very soon. Not sure which one. If you have any recommendations do let me know. There was one that had dark in the title. Can't remember the actual name of it. Again this is unscripted. This is live television. So those are some book club picks for the next few months. And I hear you loud and clear. You want more haunted location videos and I 100% agree with you. I just needed to get tax season out of the way so that, you know, they could take all of my money. And then when I try and recuperate some of that money, I can go on more adventures. So I did do a poll a couple of weeks ago asking people what they wanted to say first. And it was extremely close between the haunted nunnery, the haunted school, and the haunted manor. And the nunnery did win by 1%. And it will get done. It's just like really hard to book because trying to book it through the website that they use, you use the live chat for it, and then you get an email when they reply. But when you go back to the live chat, the entire chat is wiped and you can't reply to the email. So you have to like do another live chat and then go through the process of what you've already said. It's a long process and it's expensive too. So just a quick price rundown of what the haunted nunnery will cost is it's 500 pound for seven hours and then I have to pay like £150 for trains and then I also need to get a hotel room for the night which will probably be around about £100 and not including like food and, and drink and stuff so it, it's a little bit pricey, it's a little bit pricey which is why I don't do the haunted location visits that often but it will happen sooner or later, I just need this booking thing to go a lot easier than it is. I also want to do my camping outside while reading Blair Witch Project books which I do have four of them right now, which one's the first one again? Okay, this one, The Witch's Daughter. The Witch's Daughter is the first one. I'll probably only read one or two, but I do want to actually go camping in the woods and read them. Look, I emailed a place that was local to me because I didn't want to have to spend too much money doing that video. And I emailed them in January. They never got back to me. And I was so lovely. I was even saying camping scares the life out of me in the email. And I just wanted somewhere that felt safe and uh, I, I would be willing to 
you know, pay whatever to, to use the, the land that they were offering. And they just never got back to me. So I'm looking for a good place to go camping that is safe and also still isolated because I can imagine I'll be screaming a lot. And I don't really want to annoy people who are also using the camping grounds. So it's, it's a tricky one, it is a tricky one, but it will get done. I wanted to do that next month, but again, I haven't found a safe plot of land in a forest <laughs> where I can do this. This is literally just a check-in of my channel. I'm currently doing my year-long library challenge video. I've already done the January prompt and read the January book. I'm waiting for my February book to come in and it's not coming in until the 29th of February. Someone has it checked out. I have it reserved after them. So I'm hoping that they return it early so I can check it out. It is called What You Are Looking For Is In The Library. It's a book by Michiko Iyama and it is translated and that was my February prompt to read a translated book. And I could pick a whole myriad of books for that prompt, but I picked that one specifically because I'm on about 20 to 30 people's Patreons. <laughs> And one of the people I follow, it was their book club pick for February. So by the time it comes in, I will have missed the book club discussion for it. But I still want to read it. It looks good. Apparently it follows a very enigmatic librarian in Tokyo. And they give, I think, life-shattering recommendations. And there are five people who come to the library and they get recommendations. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Apparently we meet five visitors to the library, each at a different crossroads. Can she help them find what they're looking for? I love the idea of that. It sounds so good. So I'm currently waiting for that one to come back into the library because apparently what I was looking for was not in the library. And I do use that joke in my library vlog, by the way. The video won't be coming until December, but I'm filming it all year long, so. Yeah. I'm also gonna make a start on Fear Street by Aurel Stein, and I know what you're gonna think, because I'm sure I mentioned this maybe two or three times last year, and then I ended up not doing the video in time. But I mean it this year. This year, I'm gonna be reading the Fear Street books. I'm gonna try and read a good handful of them each month, because there are 51, and I wanna do a complete series reading vlog for the original Fear Street series, and hopefully I can get the vlog up in time for Nine Vlogs of Halloween, which I do on my channel every September and October. So I wanna make a start on these. These are pretty much goosebumps before teenagers. So each book has a different storyline and they can be quite scary. <laughs> and if I don't do it this year, you have permission to slap me in the face if you ever meet me in person. Actually, no, please don't do that. That's mean. So pretty much every month as well, I do a sort of manga all-in-one video. So I did Berserk in January. I'm currently doing Spy Family, which hopefully I'll get out by the end of February. But in March, I will be doing Witch Hat Italia. In April, I will be doing Chainsaw Man. And then in May, I will be doing Attack on Titan. And I just picked all the manga series that I'm so super interested in this year to read each month. And it's just a way of me condensing all of my manga passions into pretty much just one video each month so that I don't overwhelm my channel with a whole lot of manga content while still doing what I love. Wish Heart Atelier is set in a world where magic is performed but nobody really knows how to perform magic other than those who are in the know and you can't just like learn magic but this girl, uh, I can't remember her name, I've already read the first volume but she witnesses magic being cast and so she ends up becoming an apprentice kind of witch. And then in Chainsaw Man we follow Denji and he turns into the Chainsaw Man so his limbs become chainsaws and I don't really know what the plot is outside of that. I have read the first volume. It's been a few months. I think he gets hired or something to do things. We'll find out in April. And then Attack on Titan is set in a world where it is post-apocalyptic. The last of humanity are kind of kept behind these large stone walls. And there are these titans that roam around. They are like skinless horrible, nasty, big, tall things, and they eat people. So humanity is like trying to protect themselves within these like storm wars and things. And I read the first volume of this for my 30 Monger and 30 Days video last summer, and it was my favorite volume one in that video. So I'm very excited. I still need to do my charity shop kind of scavenger hunt that I wanted to do this month, but time escaped me. And that is essentially me buying party red books in charity shops and taking them home, well, buying them first, taking them home and finishing the book off for the previous owner. So it's a really silly idea because I won't be reading what came before. I'm just essentially completing these books for whoever owned them before me. So I feel like it could get messy. I feel like it could be very fun. The way that I'll know that they are party read is if it has a bookmark in it or some kind of dog-eared page that kind of indicates where the last owner kind of stopped reading. So it's like really silly, but I wanna do it. And when I get a silly idea in my head, I have to do it 
like the uh, Silent Library videos I've been doing. They are the silliest things in the world, but I couldn't rest until they were done. I really want to go back to doing the first and last video series that I do on my channel. So two years ago, I read the first and last one of Glass books, and I read the first and last Mortal Instruments books. But I never did another episode in that series, but I was talking about this with my friend Murphy last year, and I thought it was a good idea to do the Wheel of Time next. So I'll read the first Wheel of Time book and then the final Wheel of Time book, especially since the first book is by Robert Jordan, but then Robert Jordan passed away while writing the Wheel of Time books. And so the final book is written by Brandon Sanderson with, I think, notes and things from Robert Jordan. So I wanna go back to doing the first and last. Probably piss off a lot of people that I'm doing Wheel of Time and skipping all the middle books. But I could just borrow them from the library, so it's fine. <laughs> Wheel of Time is a fantasy series for adults. You know what, about 10 years ago I did start the first book, I just never finished it. And I can't remember what it's about. Magic, fantasy, uh, wizards, probably battles, I don't know. Oh, I really wanna do a vlog of reading like four horror novellas. I have two with me right now because I'm in such a horror mood. Because I keep going into an adult fantasy mood and then I go into a horror mood like the past few months. And I haven't quite scratched that horror itch yet. So I'm gonna read four horror novellas. So I do have, and I know a lot of people don't really like this book, but I also know somebody who does love it. So I have Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Cole. And yeah, Ali from Hardback Order really does like this book, but I know a lot of other people don't. But I'm still gonna give it a chance. I've owned this book for the last two years, I think. I think it's about a group of people who try to find a perfect wedding venue in Horror Unfolds. I also have The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval. This one follows Tom, who I believe delivers this kind of book of the occult to a sorceress in New York and it opens up a world of horror. The other one I do have my eye on is Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. I don't own it. I wanna say if maybe my library has it. Some of my friends like Gabby and Katie, they love it. They've given it five stars. So I really wanna read that because it sounds awesome. Why does it sound awesome you ask? Let me just uh, double check. <laughs> oh, you know what I should do as well? I should do a movie night for Crossroads with Britney Spears. I know it's totally different, but I feel like there's a crossover. Meet me at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. So this one follows someone called Chris and she lost her son and she accidentally cuts her finger at his memorial or something. And then later that night, she starts to see his ghost. I don't know if my library would have it in, but I'm gonna check anyway, because I also wanna pick a fourth horror novella and I wanna go to the library and just see what they have. And I wanna surprise myself with something that's there that I can just like pick off the shelf and get it out of the library. If anyone has any recommendations, recommendations for a fourth horror novella to read for this video, do let me know down below. I would love to get your recommendations. Maybe my library has it, but I do like the idea of just surprising myself when I get to the library. <laughs> Let's just say what they have. Meet me at the cross... And also, why have I got a song? I don't even know who sings it. Meet me at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. Meet me at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. Is that even a song? In March, next month, it will be my two year anniversary of the start of two series on my channel, which are my I Have to Like My Friends favorite books or I unsubscribe from their channel series and my Christy Crime and Wine kind of series too. I've already started a Christy video because I wanna try and read maybe four Christies in one video and like do it a lot more relaxed and chill, like my very first video two years ago. And then for my I Have to Like My Friends favorite books are you unsubscribe from their channel series. It's such a mouthful and I don't know if maybe I might cancel that series and start a new one because one, I get bored after a while, so I like to change things up a little bit. And two, because I did have to unsubscribe from someone in episode six, it really wasn't fun. And actually facing the consequences of my actions, I hate it. I didn't think I would ever say the day where I would actually have to unsubscribe from someone. I like the idea of it, but I don't like doing it. <laughs> so I might change it up, and from now on, I might do a, like, reading my friends' favorite books while visiting them. I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, actually. But I do kind of fancy just visiting my friends and reading their favorite books while I'm there, too. So it means that people who have already been in my series might reappear, and I can't wait. At least that will change a little, a little bit, because I really do get bored. And I know it's only been two years, but I get kind of bored of doing like the same thing over and over sometimes. So that's what we might end up doing. In April, and I've been saying this for the past two or three years now as well. Oh my gosh, like it's ridiculous. Actually no, I think since 2020, I've been mentioning I would do this. But I kind of wanted to do a reading vlog, reading Titanic books. And I have had a couple on my TBR for years that I just haven't gotten around to because I keep saying, I wanna do my Titanic reading vlog this year, and then I don't. And I think the main reason why is because I'm currently saving up for the Lego Titanic so that I can assemble the Lego Titanic while reading Titanic books. Like, 
Come on, that's genius. And it is the air of me finally doing things that I said I would do years ago. So the books I have and I've had for years, Orphans of the Storm by Celia Imry. I think this is, I was about to say, I think this is historical. No shit. It's on the Titanic, of course it's fucking historical. I believe there is a couple who are getting divorced and in the custody of the kids goes to one of the parents. And I think they end up on the Titanic. There is also a New York socialite who ends up on the Titanic also. I think it might be dual narrative. Not 100% sure, but I've been wanting to read this since I got it, which I think was potentially two years ago. And I do have the deep by Omakatsu. Again, this is one I've had for years and I haven't heard the best of things about it, but I'm still gonna give it a chance. I really do wanna read a horror set on the Titanic. I think that'll be pretty interesting to read. I think we follow Annie who is on the Titanic and then years later she ends up on the Britannic. And I think she's haunted by some things that happened on the Titanic. I don't know. I don't know. It does look terrifying if you ask me. I am sad that it hasn't had the best reception, but I don't let that deter me from reading books nine times out of ten. And you know what, actually, I also kind of fancy doing a try chapter tag or some kind of reading vlog where I read a whole bunch of first chapters from some books on my own TBR that maybe I've had for years. I've seen a lot of people on booktube doing that kind of video and I've never done it before. I would love to try a chapter of a certain selection of books and say which one I would prefer to read the most, maybe rank them and then try and read them. I think that could be pretty chill, could be pretty fun. Oh my gosh, April as well is my five year booktube anniversary. So I thought what I would do is do some kind of like time warp for a reading vlog, go back to April 2019 and see what people were reading around that time and what was popular around that time and maybe do a reading vlog based on that for my five year anniversary. Maybe someone's already done something like that. It wouldn't surprise me if maybe Kayla from Books and Lala's already done something like that. But I kind of do want to go back five years in the past when I joined Booktube and just say what people were talking about. Maybe I could watch a whole bunch of April 2019 wrap ups that people do and say what they read and then which ones I haven't read but sound interesting I can read for that vlog. That could be fun, but I don't think that's an original idea. I'm gonna have to research it because maybe someone's already done something similar. Another series I do is reading books that inspired movies, which I started about two years ago. I do them very on and off. First one I ever did was reading books that inspired my favorite movies, and then I did reading books that inspired my favorite witchy movies, and then I did reading books that inspired movies that scarred me as a child, and then I did the reading the fairy tales that inspired the Disney Renaissance films. So next I wanna do reading books that inspired my childhood favourite films. For that one I want to read Chee Chee Bang Bang by Ian Fleming. Needs no introduction, one of my favourite childhood films. Turning around on a music box that's wound by a key. Madame Doubtfire by Anne Fine, which inspired Mrs Doubtfire, so that could be very interesting. I love Mrs Doubtfire so much, R.I.P. Robin Williams. Also The Parent Trap by Eric Kastner. I think it's pronounced. Obviously inspired the Parent Trap films. There have been quite a few remakes now. The one that I love the most is the Lindsay Lohan version, but I think it would be really interesting to read those because I've never read those books before. As well as I've never read Watership Down by Richard Adams before. I did used to like the film as a child, but recently I've been seeing clips that look absolutely horrifying. And I'm like, why was that made for children? Why was I allowed to watch it as a child? So I would love to read Watership Down for that video also. It's really massive. It is massive. But I wanted to read this for years and I think now is the time to do it. I've already done three complete series reading vlogs so far this year. So I'm gonna calm myself down and I'm not gonna do any in March and April. But in May, I do wanna do the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Ryden. As a follow up to my Percy Jackson video that I did in December, I've never read the Heroes of Olympus books before in my life. I'm very excited to. No idea really what they're about other than it's kind of setting that ride in this world. And I've heard a lot of people prefer it over Percy Jackson as well, which is mad. But that will be the next complete series one. I've just done The Princess Diaries. That one has just gone up on my channel. So I need a little bit of a break after that. But I do have every faith that I will love Heroes of Olympus. I was gonna do The King Chronicles in March, but I think I'm gonna wait until I go to Egypt later this year because the King Chronicles is all to do with Egyptian mythology. So it just makes sense that I should just wait until I go to Egypt to start that series. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video, there are other ideas and stuff, but these were the only ones I wanted to mention in this video. This is like a little check-in. The last one is the second episode of the Era's Tour of Horror series on my channel. First video flopped, and that's fine. But that series is essentially me just picking horror books from each decade and reading them in a reading vlog. So in the first episode I did two horror books that came out between 1900 and 1909, and now I'm gonna go into 1910 to 1919. So the two books I'm gonna read for that is Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux, 
I've never read this before and I have been wanting to read it for years. I love the musical so much, but I also love gothic classics even more. There aren't really that many horror novels that came out in the early 1900s. A lot of them were really just short stories. So the next one is called the Testament of Magdalene Blair by Alistair Crowley. I think that one's either a short story or a novella. But I think for the early eras of horror from the 1900s, I'm gonna to struggle to pick books for each decade before we hit a certain point in the century where horror books were a lot more prominent and actual books and not just like short stories and novellas. And all I know about The Testament of Magdalene Blair is that the main character gets the power to read minds. Her husband becomes ill and I think it starts to affect her and her ability to read like thoughts and minds. Yeah, I think it's about 100 pages, so it is very short. And that's fine, we're just gonna get the early years out of the way of these horror eras, and then finally get to some gripping stuff by the middle of the century, fingers crossed. <laughs> It'll take about five episodes of my Eras 12 horror series to get there. So that's pretty much all I wanna talk about in this video. Those are essentially my reading plans, video plans for spring. It doesn't feel very spring. I don't think I have very many light and fluffy videos coming. <laughs> but as I say, it's not everything that I'm doing, just a little taste of it. So hopefully that will make you stick around to see what journey we go on over the next three months. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know if you're excited for any of the videos. Let me know any recommendations you have for me. Let's chat in the comments. A huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon, the link is in the description box as well. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.